What's up guys, nice to see you on my channel, hope you're all doing great and today we have quite interesting topic on the list. We will try to compare Sony a7R4 with Sony a7S3, which was released just day ago. So let's dive in. Hey man, you forgot what? to tell them that this video is sponsored by Sony. Uh... Yeah, I think I forgot to say this video is sponsored by Sony. No Thanks problem, a lot. Mate. <laughs> See, you. See you guys. Yeah, this video is sponsored by Sony. Yeah. So let's dive in. So guys, as you all know, Sony finally presented one day ago Yay! their new camera, Sony A7S III. And I think for us it will be great opportunity to compare their two latest cameras together, like example Sony A7R4 together with Sony A7S III, and trying to figure out what is will be the better choice for you. So let's get started. And first, as always, we'll start as any reviews from the body. So what is the advantages of Sony A7S III comparing with Sony a7R4. Oh my gosh, I will be talking a lot today about these models. So, and first, and I think important one for the filmmakers, that is full-size HDMI from the left side. Sony finally done that one, they implemented from the left side of Sony A7S III full-size HDMI. That will help you to resolve a lot of issues if you try to connect your camera to external monitor. Right now you don't need to look for the specific cable like mini HDMI or something else to connect to external external monitor like Ninja or something like that, you just easily can connect full size HDMI. If we're talking about output and input for the audio, they are both the same on both cameras. So you have input for the mic and of course output for the headsets on both cameras. And by the way, in Sony A7S III, they bring a little bit input for the mic on top to make sure that it not will be in front of the screen. So you easily can control your flip screen. And that is the next thing which they presented finally in Sony A7S III. And that is what a lot of people expecting from them. They presented the flip screen. So right now you have a similar screen to what we saw in Canon R5, R6 and any other models of Canon. They finally presented the same flip screen right now in their new camera. And right now it's working in the same way like in Canon. It's also touch screen. So we finally can use the capabilities of the touch screen on 100% so you can use it really easily as in Canon and they also presented a new menu but about menu we'll talk a little bit later. Next one if we're talking about hardware changes they of course moved the record button on top of the camera. Previously it was always on the back of the camera and right now because this camera mainly focus on the filmmakers they bring the record button for the video on top and that can resolve also a lot of issues for you as a future filmmaker. Next one if we're talking about the wheel which helping you to switch between different modes like example manual mode and filmmaker mode filmmaker mode movie mode previously in Sony a7R4 they were separated with customizable modes one two three but right now Sony decides that it will be easier if they move them close to each other so right now you have manual mode next to video mode and it will be pretty easy to switch between photography and videography if you decide so next one what else they presented from the physical changes only one left and that is dual card slot but right now that is dual card slot for SD cards but also for a new cards called SFI Express Type A which will be cost you 400 for 160 gigabytes which is a little bit expensive but of course there is the reasons why they implemented this one but that is a good thing because right now you can actually record it on the cards at the same time and on external recorder and at the same time you can back up everything on the second card so that is like mind-blowing next one we should talk about of course processor processor new in the sony a7s3 that is bions xr should help you to handle a lot of low light situations 
efficient and in general it's eight times faster than any other processor which was released by Sony. So it's already giving you advantage compared with the Sony A7R4. But if we go into the sensor, so sensor here a little bit different. Unfortunately Sony decided to not increase amount of pixels, they decided to keep it on the same level so it will be 12 megapixel sensor and here I can say it that is a win if we're talking about photography that is a win for Sony a7R4 because here you have actually 61 megapixel but that is also the win for Sony a7S3 because as for the filmmakers that is a great solution actually 12 megapixels actually for the 4k you need only 8 megapixels and 12 megapixels is more than enough to handle a video and get a great picture which you want if you saw the video from the demo of Sony it looks ridiculously good and why they decide to do and implement this 12 megapixel sensor and keep it like 12 megapixel not increasing more 12 megapixel sensor when sensor the same size which we have right now in Sony a7R4 but pixels is much much more bigger so they're getting much more light and that is giving advantage if we're talking about videography but if we're talking about photography it's not so well so if you are content creator and you need a camera photo camera for let's say pictures just for Instagram or some thumbnails or something like that this camera can easily handle this one actually I saw that a couple already youtubers trying to compare quality from Canon R5 which have I think 41 megapixel sensor with Sony a7 III and there is no big difference even if you zoom in to the 400 percent i think that is a great camera also for the photography but of course if you're trying to create some print you totally need a better bigger amount of pixels if we're talking about big prints which you want to put on the wall for the customers for the professional photographers that will be totally not enough but somebody like me or somebody like working with the content and influencer and not require like super high quality high resolution pictures and that is more than enough but that is where we start separating these cameras so if we're talking about photography Sony a7R4 will be better solution if we're talking about filmmaking Sony a7S3 will be better solution there so but next one let's talk a little bit about also changes in the software first of all menu of course Sony finally redesigned the menu and unfortunately no they not will be delivering this menu to the oldest cameras I hope that they will do that one but so far I not get any confirmation on that one so we'll stay with old menu and only Sony a7S3 as free will be with a new menu but menu was totally redesigned and right now it's working with the sensor screen so it's giving you a lot of advantages and giving you possibility to work much 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 more faster next one let's talk a little bit about video capabilities and what they presented so in 1080p you can right now have 240 frames per second that is a great solution and in 4k you can have 120 frames per second video mode which is perfect perfect if you want to record perfect slow-mo for yourself and and there is no more issues with overheating at least from what I saw from the reviews right now we already saw a lot of them of course you saw them on the different channels and you see that there is no problem with overheating which actually have right now Canon <laughs> What is a surprise? How turn the table now? <laughs> uh, right now Sony don't have any problems with overheating. At least people tested this with 4K 120 frames per second for more than two hours and there was no any problems at all. That is a great solution. That is because Sony implemented a new system to cool down the camera. They not implement the fan inside the camera to make sure that it's still compact size. But at the same time they're trying to make sure that air leaving and heat leaving the camera really really fast so that is a great news for us for filmmakers who working outside quite a lot yeah Sony winning here over Canon R5 or R6 next one and I think that is a part where a lot of you will be a little bit maybe disappointed that is a part if we're talking about color signs and right now they're a little bit different we totally see that 
Sony decided to invest some time in that one and improve them. If previously we blamed quite a lot Sony that they have not really natural colors and Canon have a better one, so right now Sony actually fixed that one. But problem is, if you have any other cameras from Sony, they not match right now. So they not match each other. Let's say if you decide to record video on Sony A7S 3 and after that, let's say you have Sony A6600 and you also record in the same S-Log, you also record in 1080p, that means no big difference between them. But when you go into color grading, this picture will be look different. So, and it will be taking a lot of time to try to match these shots to each other. So that is what I'm saying. It's not such like significant difference, but it will be still work for you to try to match colors, video from one camera to video from another camera. So that is one advantage and disadvantage at the same time. So color science is, is great, but at the same time you can order two Sony A7S 3 and then you don't have any problem. Because unfortunately right now I'm using as a main camera right now Sony A7R4 and as a second camera I use Sony A6600 because I need some portable camera also and if I decide to go with the Sony A7S3 then again I will be working a lot with the color science and need to make sure that they match like example Sony A6600 but Again, if I will be recording everything on only Sony A7S 3 then it's not will be a problem at all. So yeah, that is, I can say it, what is the difference between these two cameras. And of course, 10 bits and etc. You have a lot of different bells and whistles on top of Sony A7S 3 But what I want to say to you, like example, if you are a photographer and for you important to have these big prints and working for the clients and you're working in this professionally, then I recommend you, if you have already Sony A7R4, to keep it because it's really good for the photography and of course for filmmaking but if it's not so important for you to have like super super duper high resolution pictures for the billboards then Sony A7S 3 actually have everything what you needed if you need a photos you can get a photos from this uh, camera it's not a problem and they will be actually really great they just not will be really good maybe for the billboards like on the buildings but they still will be great and that will be enough specifically for me as influencer but as a photographer I still want to keep a Sony a7R 4 just to make sure that I have something for a great photography when I using Sony a7R 4 I never get such crispy picture from any other camera so and that is will stay forever with me I can say so from this perspective if you're an influencer you need to create video content and photo content but not like high resolution photo content then it's totally fine you can go with this camera 100%. But if you work in professional with a photographer, I highly recommend you to take a look on Sony A7R4. And if you have one, just keep it for yourself and buy Sony A7S3 for video or filmmaking. By the way, if you don't know, right now Sony A7S3 was approved by Netflix. So this camera, one of the approved by Netflix, that is actually really great because this camera not approved. That is giving you a lot of advantages and Sony done actually a great job if we're talking about this camera. That is my conclusion. I hope I helped you a little bit with the choice of the camera. Right now it's decision on you. A7S 3 will be a little bit cheaper compared with the Sony R4. And of course for the filmmaking it's 100% that Sony A7S 3 will be gold format right now. And if you of course will be interested in buying such camera I will put link on the description of this camera and you can pre-order because camera will become available only from 24th of September. It not will be available right now. But again, as soon as it will arrive in my studio, I will do the review. It will be done on this week or on the next one. So it depends on how fast camera will arrive because a lot of people want to try it and I'm in the list, in the waiting list on one of them. So yeah, I hope I will get it as soon as possible and we can take a look on the quality of the picture from the camera directly so guys i hope this video was really useful if it was don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you're still not subscribed give this video a big thumbs up if you like what i'm doing don't forget to hit this bell notification icon to not skip my future videos i'm doing content all the time and of course see you in the next one already pretty soon take care
Bye. Man, it's hard. It's hard to record two versions of myself. <laughs>